What is going on, Ive Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about three big mistakes that you're making when doing the 16-8 method. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how long it would take you to actually start burning fat when fasting. And because a lot of people don't understand how that works, they're actually not optimizing their results using the 16-8 method. Stay tuned. Okay, a lot of you know about the post-absorptive range, but for those who don't know, a quick breakdown of the post-absorptive range, that is when your body has depleted glycogen and carbs and has transitioned to using body fat as fuel. Usually this takes about six to 12 hours to get into. I have a full video explaining everything broken down as to when this happens and why it happens in my video of when does fat burning start when intermittent fasting. But there are a lot of factors that can determine if you're in the six hour range or the 12 hour range. And a lot of people who are doing the 16-8 method aren't getting enough bang for their buck. Because if you're closer to being in the post-absorptive range earlier, that means you'll be burning fat longer. And that's what you want to do. So these three mistakes are predicated on getting you into a post-absorptive range much faster. Now let's go ahead and jump right into it. Yes, eating too early. Why does it matter? Should it matter when you eat? That is true. It shouldn't matter when you do the intermittent fasting protocol. However, if you want to deplete more glycogen throughout the day before you go into your feeding window, as you tend to be more active throughout the day, if, for example, you were to break your fast for the 16-8 method in the morning, you were literally just sleeping a few minutes ago. You weren't very active. The more active you are, the more glycogen you go through to provide your body with energy. Now, if you push it as far as you can, for example, 4 p.m. eating from 4 all the way up until 12 having that as your eating window that will give you enough time to push out more glycogen from your body because not only are you fasting but you're also being active at the same time you're up you're awake you're active you're going to work you're going to the gym you're going up and down steps you're moving this will help tackle a lot of the glycogen stores that you already have in your body so that you can be in a better position once you go and start eating. This will help you push through and get closer to the six hours and further away from the 12 hour when you're doing the 16-8 method. And remember, because you know, the 16-8 method only gives you 16 hours to fast, you want to optimize those 16 hours so that you can get the best bang for your buck. Now let's go ahead and move on to mistake number two. Yes, I know a lot of people don't want to hear diet change, diet switch, diet with anything in terms of what you have to eat. But when you do the 16-8 method and you want to get yourself closer to the 6, further away from the 12, because like I mentioned, the 16-8 method is good, is a good method, but it is one of the shorter ones of all the intermittent fasting protocols that you can adopt. So you want to make sure that you are being as effective as possible. So if you reduce your carb intake and you reduce your sugar intake, then your body has less glycogens that it has to work through to push out of your body, thus getting you into that post-absorptive range much faster. It doesn't have to be keto per se, but it could be keto-like or keto-esque where you're doing things, not strictly measuring things, but you're you're noticing that you're eating less carbs and you're increasing your fats, macronutrients. I mean, there's things that you know are carbs like bread and there's things that you know that are fats like olive oil and avocados, butter. So focus on things that, that you know are fats and, and try to consume more of that so that you can get your caloric daily intake and then uh, focus on things that are carbs and try to minimize those as much as you can. And things that have sugar, try to minimize those as well. That will in turn give you less glycogen to have to work through. So instead of being at the 12 hour mark, you'll be closer to the six hour mark. And if you adopt that with correcting the first mistake where you push it as long as you can, then you'll be burning through more body fat using the 16-8 method. And now let's move on to the third and final mistake that most people are making when utilizing the 16-8 method. That's right, not 
exercising and, and and I know that a lot of people are gonna jump in the comments section and say well exercise is only 10% exercise is only 10% of what you need for 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 burning calories for losing weight yes for burning calories and losing weight but guess what can move super super fast glycogen and guess what gets depleted super super fast when you're doing exercise glycogen when you're doing cardio glycogen gets depleted as your first fuel source before your body has to switch to body fat so if you're exercising you're speeding that up you're speeding up getting the glycogen out of your body as opposed to not exercising and just letting it go at the normal speed at the normal pace when you're exercising you're actually pushing your body to push out more glycogen for energy and that's what you want to do because you want to switch over to body fat as fast as possible you want to be burning body fat for as many hours as you can so if you implement exercise then you'll be much more effective with the 16-8 method also weight lifting weight resistance resistance training period building muscle can make you more insulin sensitive so it helps when you're more insulin sensitive because your body can switch over much easier to burning body fat when you are more insulin sensitive than you are insulin resistant. You wanna give your body the best platform, the best setup so that it can do what it needs to do to get you into that post-absorptive range much faster so that you can squeeze all of the benefits from those 16 hours that you can. Remember, 16-8 method is good, is a very good entry level intermittent fasting method, is a better method when being more social, uh, when you want to uh, have friends over, hang out with friends, you have a big eating window, you have a big time window. So there are many benefits that come with that, but understand that getting into that post-absorptive range and trying to get the most out of it so that you're fasting as many hours as you can after you enter the post-absorptive range. So think about it. If it takes you 12 hours to enter that post-absorptive range, you're only burning body fat for four hours from a 16-8 method, because you only have 16 hours. But if it takes you only six hours to get into that post-absorptive range, you're burning body fat for 10 hours per day. You're using body fat as your main primary source of fuel for 10 hours each day. So if you focus on these three mistakes and eliminate them, in which you're pushing your eating window further, in which you're eating less carbs and sugar and increasing your fat intake, and you're going to the gym doing cardio as well as weight resistance training, all of that put together will help you with the 16-8 method. Also, one more thing about that first mistake, because I know a few people might ask me this. If you have an overnight schedule, for example, tailor it to your schedule. So if, for example, you work at 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., instead of doing 4 to 12 a.m., you can do 8 to 4 a.m. Do it where it best tailors to your schedule. Base it on when you sleep and you, when you wake up and the activity after you do that. So if you sleep at seven in the morning, eight in the morning, and you wake up at four, push it to as far as you can while you're still awake so that you can try to burn as much glycogen as you can before entering your eating window. Those are the three big mistakes that people are making when utilizing the 16-8 method. Change those things around and you'll be burning much more body fat in a much more effective way while still doing the 16-8. And I want to thank my patrons from my Patreon, and I'm going to put their names right up here. And of course, guys, as always, I will see you on Sunday for another FAQ. Peace.